Okay, can everybody hear me now? Yes. Praise yes. God. Well, isn't God good? Yes. All the time. Yes. One of the most interesting things I find about being chairman of the FGBA is nothing is ever the same. God is always doing a new thing. Yes. Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and a river in the desert. You know, we often remind ourselves God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Which means that yesterday he was doing a new thing, today he's doing a new thing, and tomorrow he's going to keep on doing a new thing. So if you ever find yourself in a rut, in a rock and a rock and hard place, well the solution is get out of there, get to a new place. A place of thanksgiving. A place of praise. This is the wonderful thing about the FGB fellowship like this. We can come together and just give glory to God and just worship Him. I just love all those songs that we sing. Beautiful old classics. And uh, they're rich. You know, you don't have to get very smart or super spiritual about songs. Even the simplest of songs can bring people to Jesus. I remember a friend of mine telling me that here in Canberra, back in the 1970s, here in Canberra, I was doing an outreach, one every week in the civic centre, this church, the Connor Uniting Church, back in the days of Harry Westcott in the um, Great Revival. It was buckling down the rain. There was only three of them doing the singing. They stood in the shelter and they shivered and whatnot. I can remember them telling me that story. And they decided to sing one song. Jesus loves me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. So they sang that song, that chorus, and said, okay, that's enough, let's go. So I thought they went back home to the nice warm fires to the get out of the rain. Then three weeks later, in church, Harry asked for anybody to share a testimony. And a stranger came up out of the congregation. And he came up to the microphone and he said, I want to share with you something really weird. One night, a couple of weeks ago, I was in my office. He was a Chelston Regional Manager, I think it was. He went into his office to get everything sorted out in preparation to commit suicide. He was going to commit suicide that night. Then all of a sudden he heard these crazy people down there in the pouring rain singing, Jesus loves me. This I know, because the Bible tells me so. And it cut him to the heart. And he got himself on his knees and wept before God, asking him to forgiveness, to think that he would even want to commit suicide. And he gave his life to the Lord and he just shared with the church. You know, it's the simple things of life that matter. The other day I was challenged, do you care? Whatever I do, do you care? When I pray for others, do I really care about them? There's a word that was being driven deeper and deeper into my heart and my spirit. How much do I really care about seeing my family come to salvation? All through the COVID outbreak, we got together, we prayed for Australia to be safe from COVID-19, we prayed for all our families. In our household, with Barbara, my wife, Sarah, my stepdaughter, and myself, we're the only ones saved in our families. So, you know, I prayed for my mother, who's 94, 
both my sisters and my children and my nieces and nephews, and we do the same for Bob, my wife, and my stepdaughter, well, her father's still alive, so we pray for her father and his brothers and sisters and all that. And it was interesting because just a couple of weeks ago, I received news that my mother was seriously ill and had to be, and she rushed herself off the hospital. She wasn't going to waste time. She had to call a taxi and took her off the hospital. But often there's waiting time for ambulances. And she had a serious heart condition, breathing problem, and whatnot. She was in a very bad way. My sister, one of my sisters found out, so she contacted me, and Barb, Sarah, and I, we immediately sat down. And we stormed the heaven praying for her salvation. We didn't care whether she lived or not. All we cared about was her salvation. And while we were praying, my stepdaughter said it, told me afterwards, I had a vision. While we were praying, I had a vision of your mum, my mum, in bed, with Jesus there, and she walked in. And he said to her, your time is not up. And he walked. 94 years old. Your time is not up. I just believe that, you know, he was answering our prayer for salvation. Her time was not up because she needed to be saved. She it's her God's plan for her to be saved. Salvation is very precious. And the challenge of the God given me was how much do you really care about the FGBA, about your family, about your nation, and even at the moment about America, England, France, with all the COVID and the elections and whatnot. Do you really care? And that's the challenge I put you before you. How much do you really care? I care. But I want to care more. We all want to care more. So I'm only going to close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, just thank you. Thank you that you loved us and cared for us so much. That you gave us Jesus. You sent Jesus to save us, to rescue us from the pits of hell, from a life of eternal damnation. You care for us, you discipline us, you love us, you do all wonderful things with us because you love us. And we thank you that you care for us. And Father, I just pray that we too have a heart that really cares about all the things that you care about. In Jesus' name, Amen.